Okay, guys, good morning. It is Saturday. Good morning. Good morning. We've got uh, lots of people in the room here, but uh, just a uh, good shout out, everybody. Happy, uh, happy Saturday morning. It's Saturday walk and talk time. How's everybody doing? Great. Hey, great. Super. Right on, right on. Well, um, what is today's date? Uh, it's been one of those kind of weeks for me. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody might have to help me out on what month it is. I think we're in December, right? <laughs> December 9th. Okay, December 9th. Okay, happy December, Saturday, December 9th. And um, boy, uh, just a lot going on. I feel like I could monologue for this entire hour, which would bore you guys to tears. So I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go around, but I do have some, uh, I think, uh, really uh, informative stuff to share uh, based on some experiences this week, and I'm looking forward to sharing on that, but uh, this is more about going around the horn, and, and those that um, aren't familiar with our Saturday Walk and Talks, this is just our once a week opportunity to kind of get together as a community. It's uh, got facilitators in it, it's got clients in it, it's got prospective clients in it. Um, and it's uh, just, again, just fun to get together as a community um, and talk about things related to health point. Okay, so we might be talking nutrition, we might be talking um, movement and exercise and so forth, all the various elements of the health point uh, six week cycle program. But it's mostly about kind of going around the horn and those that want to share uh, can share and those that don't want to can stay off camera off mic and just be kind of a fly on the wall. And these do get recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel, Voices of Health Point YouTube channel. So if you're not able to attend uh, uh, bright and early Saturday mornings, you're welcome to just play those playbacks on the YouTube channel. But with that, um, we always enjoy getting started off with uh, Carol always out doing her power walk in a beautiful setting somewhere. It seems like consistently now you're back in Sarasota, Florida area. It looks like a beautiful blue sky there. You are on camera. I'll turn it over to you, Carol. Good morning. Well, good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful day here. I have a light jacket on because it's 65 and uh, us wimps in Florida, 65 is cold for us. <laughs> so when that sun comes out, man, it's gonna warm up, so I'm gonna shed this jacket real quick. But anyway, I just wanna welcome everybody and happy December. This is an exciting month. It's a month of joy, a month of celebration. Uh, and just uh, all around, it's gonna be a great month. Sure is a month of partying and uh, all that kind of stuff too. And so it's a month that we have to be a little bit extra vigilant, not crazy but we have are weird, but we have to be a little bit more diligent because there's gonna be a lot more stuff that comes across our food path than perhaps under normal conditions. And so if you prepare yourself by maybe having a protein snack before you leave for a function, uh, you have some twist tubes with you so you can be drinking your, your wonderful Nutrilite cocktail of twist tube and water instead of some goopy drink, uh, you'll, be, you'll be great. And I just want to say that um, I'm excited because Monday there's going to be a very small handful of people from Network 21 uh, that is going to be doing a Zoom. We're going to be hearing some new things, but also hearing some more things about Health Point. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it might be that they're going to be doing a, a lean team. And a lean team is a group of people that decide they want to get back on the program, get on the program for the first time, customers, um, business owners, everybody's invited. There'll be prizes. And uh, so I'm kind of speaking out of turn a little bit, but I think that's what's going to be coming. So uh, lots of good things. So boy, if you're on the program, be talking to others about it. And uh, I I just want to hear stories today. I know there's going to be some good stories coming, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So back to you, Eric. All right. Fantastic, Carol. Well, that's exciting. Yes, guys. So uh, 
For those that uh, may not be familiar with uh, Network 21 or N21.com, it is kind of our educational platform uh, for those that have uh, received and dug into our Health Point kit. If you've got the physical kit, the physical <laughs> box that has the guidebook in it, it's got the, the food choices, it's got all the different pieces that comes from uh, Network 21. Uh, Network 21 is based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And it's a worldwide educational uh, platform, second to none. Um, and they are the ones that put together the educational uh, portions of the Health Point program. And in fact, it was, uh, I'm trying to think of where I posted this. Um, anyhow, I posted it recently that within the N21 app, uh, now, let me clarify, this is within the N21 educational app. This is not uh, the Health Point app, uh, but the N uh, N21 educational app for those that are business builders. Uh, there are 24 titles. I did a search on Health Point. There's 24 titles in there on content specifically related to the Health Point program. So, yeah, uh, it's phenomenal. As Carol mentioned, they occasionally will do these uh, lean team programs, and it's just uh, it's a, just a great environment, a great uh, uh, educational platform, and great support organization. So, um, uh, any other thoughts on that, uh, Carol? Uh, 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 as, no, as thank you for covering that because I uh, I realized that uh, number twenty one might not be. Um, uh, you know, um, familiar with some of the new people. So thank you for that clarification. And yeah, um, and also to remind people that this is a worldwide program. This is a program that is in, oh gosh, uh, probably 30, 40 countries working successfully all the way from India to uh, across Europe, um, everywhere, Australia, in fact, a lot of the leaders come from Australia. So this is not a program that we conjured up. This is a worldwide program where probably I'm gonna say, well, I'll say thousands of people, and it might even be tens of thousands, have successfully lost weight over the years that's been around. So you are part of a proven system. This is not something that's not trial. Yeah. This is a proven system. So it works if you work it. So back yes, to you, Eric. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was having a conversation with someone uh, actually yesterday, uh, last last night. Uh, he's from Louisiana, and he just has a couple of questions about the Health Point program as compared to this this other very interesting sounding program. I won't I won't go down that rabbit trail, but he used a phrase. He said, "Now, Eric, you know, with with your program, or he said it in a way that it it I, I wanted to clarify for him. I said." understand that this isn't Eric's program. <laughs> I'm a facilitator of this program. This is much bigger than me. You know, I'm uh, just standing on the shoulders of giants uh, that are, uh, you know, this, this thing has been around for decades and is just a, a scientifically based, you know, you know, it's incredible. So I just, and then he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure this, he understood this wasn't something that, you know, I was just working away in my little back room, concocting this, you know, six week cycle program. Uh, I don't, I don't have the capability to do that uh, or the intellect to do that, I'm sure. But uh, uh, globally, Network 21, because guys, you know, one of the things with a, a global footprint like Network 21 has is, you know, and I was explaining this to this guy too. I said, it's not just what works, it what's it's sustainable. And when you're working with the Indian culture and the and the crazy Australian culture, if I can say that, <laughs> I mean, you know, let's camp out on that. Is it is it is do they come out of the womb as choleric personalities or what? I mean, it is hilarious. <laughs> They're a bunch of renegades. <laughs> oh my gosh, those guys are a hoot. Uh <laughs> But uh, anyhow, you know, the, the point is, is that when you're looking to uh, architect a program that works, hey, you know, what works in, you know, little small town, you know, or East Lansing, Michigan? I don't know. Maybe it'll work there. What works, or you're at Carroll in Sarasota. What works in these? All right. 
But then you start trying to do these in other geographies, other cultures. I mean, the guy in Louisiana, we're talking about the Louisiana food. You need a global footprint in order to put together and architect something that is sustainable. Um, uh, and that is the power of Network 21. So it's incredible. You know, I think, Eric, and especially right about now, it's really important what you just said to, to um, be able to give that message to people you're talking to that maybe uh, recognized you lost weight, wanted to know what you were doing, all of that kind of stuff, and um, help people realize that I'm, I just chose to effectively follow a program that has been followed for the last 30 years. I mean, <laughs> this program's been around since the 90s. This is, you know, and then even before that, it was a successful program that Network 21 got a licensing agreement with and took it to a whole new level. So this is not, um, you know, the new kid on the block because trust me, around this time of the year and January, everybody's gonna be hit with the new kid on the block and it's gonna come and it's gonna go just the same as gym memberships do. And this one doesn't come and go. This one stays and has stayed and has a tremendous track record. And that is a really important message to bring to people is we're not going away. And this isn't a January program. This is an all year round healthy lifestyle program. And uh, so exactly what you said, Eric, that's the message that we got to get across to people. Absolutely, yep, absolutely. So, well, that is wonderful. Looking forward to, uh, not only that, uh, that you specifically talk about, Carol, but I know that, that uh, you and Hank are part of a kind of a small group that are getting, you know, uh, insights and, and new developments uh, through Network 21 as it relates to Health Point. So we just so appreciate having you guys uh, in a leadership position like that to be able to get, um, you know, get a, get a heads up on what's coming down the, 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 the pipe and so forth. So thank you so much for that. And um, we are going to go around the horn. We're going to give, um, again, nobody has to speak if they don't want to, but uh, if they do want to, I'm going to give them an opportunity to anyways. Uh, we have, I, I think we can call you a newbie still. Uh, we've got Julie on here. Uh, Julie, I don't know if you care to chat or not, uh, but if you are, uh, Good morning and welcome uh, and happy Saturday. I'll give you a moment here to see if you chime in or not. Uh, you are you are muted now. You were just unmuted. So just know that if you do want this, there you go, you're unmuted. Do you want to speak? I just wanted to say good morning. And I, I feel like I'm still a newbie, but <laughs> it's interesting that I don't, I keep my, my little notebook with me of the plan. Uh, but I'm finding I know the answers and that has finally come. Uh, you know, I still need it. I have got to keep it right nearby me, but um, I'm, I'm, it's coming naturally that I know what I need to have today or what I want to have today and it's on the plan. It's great. Oh, that, that's really great. And I think all of us can, you know, relate to, what you're saying there, Julie, and of course, you know, you're, you know, with this repetition, uh, you know, it be, starts to become a little bit more natural, a little bit more intuitive, a little bit more part of your, your, your new lifestyle, your new daily healthy habits. Yes. And so, uh, and to give some context here, you're, and I apologize, I don't have the, my dashboard up here, but by my memory, you started roughly end of September? Was it end of yeah. August or end of September, October-ish? Uh, it was it was end of September. End of yes. September. Okay. Yeah. And um, um, go ahead. I'm in, my, I'm in my second add more food period. Um, yes. So it's yep. it, it, what I remembered in the beginning was, gosh, how am I ever going to remember the the fruits that I should not have because I, I had all fruit before. I drank some juices before and I've really made a change in that. I, there are no fruit juices really for me, but lots of fresh fruit. 
and I love oranges. That's my morning go-to when I can add it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's come a long way for me, and um, I'm really pleased about it. So. Yeah, and are you, if you're comfortable sharing, kind of like where you're at in terms of your uh, results? I know, um, you know, you, you had kind of two criteria coming in. Uh, one will require another doctor visit to get a fresh uh, right. run on your A A one C number, so we don't know that. Let's say yet, but uh, if uh, you know, give us an update on how you're doing. Well, my my original, I set an E. Well, it wasn't so easy, but it was a. Uh, a makeable goal. I wanted to lose 20 pounds. I knew that would help my A1C, especially if I cut out the carbs, the simple carbs, the, the full on sugar. And I've been able to do that. And I met the goal of 20 pounds and I'm even down, I think one and a half more than that, which is encouraging. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Give a celebration of, uh, a woot <laughs> woot on that. That is really, <laughs> really awesome. Congratulations, <laughs> Julie. Thank you. It's it's a working plan, and and as you were saying, there are the plans that always start up in in January. But I feel like I got a head start, and I'm not gonna let go of this. Yeah, and 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 uh, let me just say. Um, you know, you, you guys, you and Bruce have a, a lifestyle, a fun lifestyle. So it's not like you're just, uh, you know, sitting around doing nothing and trying to integrate uh, the health point, uh, program. I mean, you guys just got back from, uh, uh where were you at? I've Hilton head. Hilton head. Yes. Yeah. So, so here I am, you know, getting, you know, the daily updates, you know, from Julie and, this isn't the first time. I mean, geez, in, the, in these two cycles, you've been Chicago back and forth a couple of times, I think, you know, mm -hmm. next thing I know it's, Hey, I'm hopping a plane and going to Hilton head. And then, um, uh, I, you know, you guys need to settle down, you know, you guys <laughs> <laughs> um, but my point, <laughs> yeah, go, go ahead. Fine by me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you, you've, you've, you've had to um, navigate how to do this in, you know, in a travel environment, in an airport, in a, you know, how to get steps in and in, in a new environment in Hilton Head, you know, how to, you know, take your supplementation. I mean, um, can you speak to any of that in terms of any, um, you know, things that you found easy or any things that you found difficult as you're travel and 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 you know just life i mean it doesn't have to be you know people going to hilton head and stuff it can be just people you know going to visit a relative a, a couple of states over or something can you speak to that a little bit yes exactly well the a tip that i got from you eric but it's it happens every time i go is i i pack my scale <laughs> i pack it in the bag i pack uh, some extra power bars, the protein powder. Um, if, if you hadn't told me, you know, those are simple things you can do. I don't know if I even would have thought of it to stay on the plan, but I, I've done it. And yeah, that darn scale goes through airport security and all, <laughs> but I know that it's the scale I'm used to. And I know that's what I need to follow. So that was great. And traveling has not been too bad. Most of the time it's, other than Hilton Head, it was to go watch grandkids and they keep me busy and, and moving. And um, when I'm with them, I'm, I am all in on the floor, up and down. And I think I get a good workout when I'm watching the grandkids. So anyway, it's worked. It's been great. I'm not done uh, yet. No, no. Um, but um, uh I, I let me um say, say a couple of things on that first of all great really appreciate those uh insights um and your grandkids I mean we all have our whys you know why we're doing this and uh, what a what a warm um uh image of you playing with your grandkids I mean we're doing this not just to meet some number on a dashboard we're doing it to be able to you know, live the life that we want to. And uh, how beautiful that you're able to spend that time with your grandkids and 
you know, and now with a, an increasingly healthier and healthier path to be able to enjoy that even, even more. And um, I just, I just love that, but uh, yeah, keeping that uh, scale. Um, so a quick tip for somebody on that, if you're able to pack your scale along, like uh, Julia is talking about wonderful. Another pro tip is to calibrate a scale. If you know that there's a scale at your location that you're going to, let's say you're going to a relatives, you know, they've got a scale there, but you don't know if it's going to be the same measurement as yours. What you can do is take something that you normally um, pack with you, let's say a laptop computer, you don't want it to be like two ounces, but you don't want it to be 50 pounds either. So I use a laptop computer. I always have it with me. I weigh that on my scale at home, whatever it is, it is. Let's just say it's 4.2 pounds. Um, then when I get to my location, I put that laptop on that scale, say in my, my relative's home. And if it's 4.2 pounds, then great, they calibrate. But if their scale says that it's 4.8 pounds, then I know that I'm 0.6 pounds to adjustment. OK, and we don't have to hyper focus on the numbers, but we've done that where we travel and you step on your scale and you're like, well, is that because I ate different last night or is it because this scale is different than the one at home? This process of calibrating your scale by measuring a known object will alleviate that second guessing type of a thing. So uh, that's a little pro tip on that. But uh, gosh, thank you so much, Julie. <laughs> Really appreciate that. And again, congratulations on your 20 pounds plus uh, to date and in your second uh, add more food days uh, portion of your cycle. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are going to go around the horn to um, uh, Billy and then Marilyn, if you're interested and then Larry, and then David. All of these are only if you're interested. So good morning, Billy. Good morning. There you are, Billy. How are you? Good morning. How's everybody? Doing, Doing good. fantastic. Good. But anyway, yeah, thanks for being here this morning. I uh, just had a thought. I came to my mind, been on my mind for a little while. And, uh, and the thought is, day by day, in every way, I am getting better and better. I'm saying that for, for, the, for the simple reason that uh, this week, yes, no, to, today, tomorrow will be the next week. Well, next week, we'll be going on vacation. And since we're talking about things that work, what, what, what we already decided, what I already have did, we're going to Las Vegas to the rodeo. So what, what we've done is that I have sent uh, water and energy drink already to uh, Las Vegas to the hotel so where we're going to be staying. So when we get there, we're going we gonna to already have our water and our energy drink. So that's a big part of my life. I was, uh, by listening to everybody, that I, I realized that uh, this, this the product that I'm using for my way, it works. So I don't want to stop using this uh, energy drink and, and perfect water. Thank you. I, I love that. Actually, it's it's it stays with kind of this uh, travel theme. So what what you're saying, Billy, is you're actually, you know, you're going to Las Vegas. You're shipping product there ahead of time to the hotel yes. that you're going to be staying at. So so when you arrive, you know, a you don't have to be carrying this through, you know, TSA and stuff like that. Um, and and B you don't have to be arriving and going. Oh my gosh, you know, where's the water that I want? Oh, here it is. I've got my perfect water, you know. Uh, and for those that aren't familiar with perfect water, that's a whole nother topic. Hank has done a phenomenal job. Yeah, Carol's got her perfect water there that she's carrying. Um, but it's uh it's it's phenomenal. So I can see why you would want that there and then the other products. That's a great travel tip. So thank you very much for that, Billy. And uh um yeah, it sounds fun. The rodeo. Um, that sounds like a good time. Well, thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for that. And oh my gosh, I didn't write it down. Um, but I think I said if you're interested, Marilyn, um, if if you weren't in the next one, I'm making you the next one now, but that's only if you care to uh speak and if you don't uh there we go i think i see a, an unmute there good morning marilyn good morning <laughs> how's uh how's marilyn this morning i am doing pretty good today i'm out walking with the dog of course 
Crazy so crackers. Stop her. Oh yeah, may have to shout some commands because he's not listening today. <laughs> but <laughs> he seems to be doing pretty good right now. If I stop and stand on the lead, it'll be okay. Right. Kind of pulls me along. But I'm kind of stalled on my weight loss. I guess that's pretty much normal, but that's okay. Just stick with it. Yeah, and and uh stalled at how many pounds down? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> 20 something. <laughs> 20 something. All right. So can we give a whoop whoop Here, for that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So um, and you you have a number of complicating factors, you know, that are that are going on with your um, you know, your your management of your cancer diagnosis and the medications that you take on that front, you know, as prescribed by your, by your, your, your doctor, um, that, you know, kind of plays into this. Um, everybody's got their own unique, you know, journey, you know, some people, ha they don't have a, a cancer that they're, um, uh, working with, but they've got other issues. Maybe they have totally different issues. Maybe their difficulty is they have a, a spouse that just loves uh, to <laughs> eat bad, right? And they've got to try to manage that. Um, maybe they've got to hold three jobs, you know, to, you know, make uh, ends meet, and they've got to navigate that. And maybe somebody else has got seven kids. So everybody's got their, uh, their journey. Uh, but yours, is unique in the sense that you have, uh, you know, a, a pharmacological component. You know, you have a, a drug component that has some effects um, that are there to work with the type of cancer that you have, specifically working on an, an estrogen hormone, but that in turn, you know, has uh, you know, you know, creates a little bit of headwinds on some things. So would that be kind of a fair assessment of, of, of your journey? Oh yeah. yeah. If anybody told me, if I knew what I know now, I would have said, I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe. Cause it's just, it's a battle. Yeah. The absolute battle. But yeah. I, I have one question. Yes. Like going up and down the stairs forwards and backwards do you do up forwards down backwards or down <laughs> forwards up backwards or do you do them both yeah great question so um to give context for anyone uh, that might not be aware um or is listening to this later uh marilyn is speaking to there's a, a brilliant individual his name is ben patrick um, look them up on YouTube under Ben Patrick or more commonly known as the knees over toes guys. <laughs> um, and he talks about how to do uh, movement squats and so forth in the proper way. And it's not what was taught got, that got initiated back in 1978 under this Duke study that let me just cut to the chase and say that when they started saying don't put your knees over your toes. Since then, that time, we've had a tenfold increase in knee replacement surgery in the United States. So it's one of these things, kind of like the standard American diet. Whoever put together this initial study thought it was a good idea. 30 years later, we're reeling from it like we are right now with diabetes in the United States. And like when it comes to knees and so forth, you know, uh, we've got so many knees replacements. So with that as a brief context, I would say people just check out YouTube for the knees over toes guy. But uh, on the going up and down stairs or any way walking backwards or anything else like that, first of all, just do it. Uh, I would say do it with what works for you, what's comfortable, what your environment allows for. Um, what I do is I go down the stairs and since I'm often holding my phone in one hand and therefore not incredibly attentive. I'm, I'm not, you know, super into my phone, but maybe I'm leaving a voice memo or some, or listening to a podcast. I keep the other hand um, either on the wall or a rail, 
depending on which stairs I'm doing in the home. And I go back up backwards slowly. Okay. Even though I'm very comfortable and very balanced, um, I go back up slowly and then I go back down and then I just go back up backwards. In other words, slowly. Um, and that, that is working on that muscle strength, which so many exercises do focus on. But when you're doing that type of knees over toes, or the other thing that's not as scalable, but Ben talks about is if people are in a gym, you've all seen these sleds, you know, where you can pile weights on them and then you put a strap around your waist and you, and you go backwards across like a basketball court. But that's not something that most of us have in our home. So the alternative strategy is to use, um, maybe just start walking backwards in a safe environment. Don't even do the stairs. But then when you're ready to uh, go to the next level, you can walk down the stairs and go back up. And what it does is it works on the connective tissues, you know, the tendons, the ligaments, not just the muscles. This, that's the problem out there that Ben talks about. So many pro programs focus just on the muscles and they're not addressing the connective tissues of the tendons, the other connective tissues of tendons and ligaments and synovial fluid, which is the fluid that's inside your, your joints that's important to the health of that joint. So um, you strengthen that and that just increases your lifestyle. It makes you less at risk of injury if you, you know, trip and fall, if you snag your toe on something as you're walking down a sidewalk, you know, you have more strength and stability to be able to recover, uh, you know, without injury. So that's my answer there. Uh, if, if that answered it, Marilyn, did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Okay. Yep. So great question. You always come in here like, hey, I've got a question. So I love that. <laughs> kind of keep, kind of keep. I wonder why the other way. <laughs> I wondered why the other way was much easier. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going up and coming down backwards. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, start with where you're at and, you know, do with whatever you're comfortable. Maybe just try one step or two steps, you know, uh, before you kind of go up a whole flight. In our homes, um, you know, our, you know, we're, I haven't counted the steps, but we're like, I don't know six or eight steps down, then it turns on a landing and it's another six or eight steps down um, on all the stairways in our home. So um, I would say if you've got a, you know, flight of 40 steps, <laughs> maybe, maybe <laughs> don't, maybe don't do all 40 on your first crack. Because <laughs> one thing that I will tell you, you know, we've talked about zone two, um, you know, movement and power walking and so forth. Boy, I tell you what, you do an up and down on those stairs and your heart, you're going to start feeling a little thump thump going on because it will really start putting the pump on. So um, there's that factor as well. So, uh, well, thank you so much, Marilyn. That was <laughs> amazing. Really appreciate you and, 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 and great job. You, uh, you are an inspiration. We've all got our own journeys, but you are uh, incredible inspiration. So we very much appreciate you. And yeah. Thank you. We are going Congratulations, to Marilyn. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Um, I believe I said uh, Larry next. Uh, Larry, if you're interested and available, we'd love to hear from you. There's Larry. Good morning, Larry. How are you? Happy hey, Saturday. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hey, uh, Eric, I want to thank you for asking Julie to share her journey because, uh, you know, some of us have been doing the program for a while in our own lifetime maintenance. And it's always good to hear from some of the newer members who are starting out. But you know what I remember? I, I can see uh, Julie's learning about the programs. Like she said, she was looking at the book and she knows some of the answers already. You know, and being in the educational background, hey, learning is very important to me. But I, I was, um, you know, and I was listening to her thinking. Her thinking was a little bit different than when she first started. You know, now she knows some things, like she said. And, and um, you know, like I used to have some students, they used to think, oh, well, I'm getting better at this because, I, because my guessing is better. And as they were learning things along the way, what they were doing was now they were taking educated guesses. You know, they, you know, they had something to back it up. They weren't taking just 
a random wow guess. And so I think after you get on the program, you do uh, get like that. You start doing some learning and Julie reminded me of that. You know, uh, as, as I was thinking about that, I was thinking about a, a story that was in Atomic Habits. Uh, uh, it was talking about, you know, when we talk about you can't just have knowledge, you need to apply that knowledge. Um, they were telling a story about a guy who went to a country that was having difficulty uh, with their health because they, uh, you know, they couldn't control their environment. And so they were having health problems. So one of the things that they decided to do was to get people to wash their hands more. And so what they did was they started educating people about the benefits of washing your hands and, and that would help with disease and other things that were going on. And, and, and so when the team went in and started actually working with the people there, they found out that they knew they knew what things they should do in order to keep themselves healthy and the benefits of washing their hands. But in the meantime, they found out that most people weren't doing it. Okay, they would, they would haphazardly do it. They forget it sometimes. They wash one hand. You know, they would do, uh, sometimes they just forget it. Oh, I didn't do it at breakfast or something like that. And, um, and they, and so they had the same problem, but what they started doing was that they found out that some of the people that were in their country were using a certain kind of soap. And they liked the soap because it lathered up real good and also uh, because it smelled good. And so they, uh, so they started promoting that. They started promoting the lather and the smell good and most people wanted that. And what they ended up having was they ended up having more people wash their hands, not because of they knew the knowledge, but because they liked the experience. And because it was such a pleasurable experience, they started setting up places at their home where they could wash their hands. And well, in the long run, to make a long story short, uh, they, in, their, in their country, they started eliminating half the diseases. Okay, and people started being healthier and people enjoyed the experience. You know, and I, one of the things that Julie was saying and, you know, that I was thinking about too is that also it was saying, make it a pleasurable experience because we work on emotions. And the other thing that's been helpful is to make it obvious, put things in your way that make it easier for you to do. I think Eric, at one time you were saying, you put your shoes by the door so that you get up and go out and exercise or something like that. You know, it was mm -hmm. kind of a reminder, prepare yourself ahead of time, as I think we're saying. So, uh, you know, having the knowledge is good. Most people have it, but making it easy to use and making it a, a, a pleasurable experience. And just like we're here on Saturday morning with our Saturday morning walk and talk, uh, it, it, it's a pleasurable experience. And so, you know, it adds into promoting you to do the things that you want to do. So rather than rambling on, I think I'm going to call that to an end <laughs> for letting me share, Eric. I certainly appreciate it. Oh, man, you um, uh, so many things I was scribbling down here. Um, so the Atomic Habits book uh, that Larry is referencing, and thank you so much for that. You know, we find ourselves commenting on that book atomic habits by james clare it's it should almost be a prerequisite if if i can figure out some way to do it at scale to you know become a client read, you have to read this book first or something like that i'm not going to do that it's not scalable but certainly I encourage people to to uh that it is, there's, there's no better book out there. He is the known expert. James Clear is sought after as a corporate speaker. He'll go in at probably unimaginable fees and speak to a corporation on this topic of habits, all kinds of habits. We just happen to apply it to health point, right? And so, you know, Larry's hitting on those, those tenants, you know, here's this population in the country that had the knowledge I mean, most people have the knowledge on how to get healthy. I think I heard it said best once where if it just took knowledge, 
all of us would have six pack abs and be billionaires, right? <laughs> because <laughs> because the, 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 the knowledge is out there on how to do six pack abs and how to be a billionaire. So why are you know, some people not having six pack abs and, and presumably not being a billionaire because it takes more than just knowledge. And whether it's washing your hands or getting healthy, um, there are psychological, emotional uh, patterns and lessons. And James Clear in the book, Atomic Habits, just, just covers that so, so well. So thank you, Larry, for um, using uh, that powerful story of the country and they're washing their hands and the scent that that uh, comes into play. I was thinking on just on myself, and this is not like a health thing, but one of our products is uh, our Glister line, right? Our, our Glister oral care lines. And I, I can't imagine going to bed without giving a couple of squirts of that Glister and uh, probably brushing my teeth with that. And, and it's kind of like that scented uh, soap uh, situation that you're talking about, Larry. Right. I just like that tingly, cleansy feeling. And I just, it, nobody else would have to tell me to do that or discipline me to do that. I just, I can't imagine going to bed without doing that. It is a habit, but I also enjoy kind of like the scented soap that the folks in that country uh, liked or the lather. I just like that. So man, that's a powerful thing and um, uh, definitely applicable here to health point. So Thank you again, Larry. Uh, we are going to go to uh, David, if you're interested, and then Hank, if you're interested. Uh, uh, David, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Chris and I are here out walking in Michigan, and it's uh, a robust 50 degrees and the sun's shining. So what a great morning to be out walking. That's right. And you uh, talked a little bit about the psychological part of programming. And so one of the things I was, uh, so Chris and I have been, had some people over to our house partying, so to speak. And we've uh, been to some parties and we went, had a cookie party with uh, my grandkids and where there's lots of pizza. And so one of the great things about this, the program is each time you go through a cycle, you become, I think, more mentally tough and become more the rider of the horse, as I call it, versus the horse ride leading you. And Chris has uh, successfully lost 100 pounds, and, but yet she continues to journal every mo uh, evening and night what her weight is. And so one of the things that uh, happened after several days of having great times is uh, Chris gained maybe uh, five, six pounds, and the great thing about Health Point is, man, you don't get rattled. You just know, wow, I got to get back to looking at those details and get back to having the, the lettuce wraps and the different things. And I just think of the difference from when she was in Weight Watchers a long time ago. When she hit her goal weight, she thought she was done and basically went back to her old habits and then ended up gaining a lot of weight. And just the this, this sustainability, as you had talked about, of the Health Point program and how, more, how much more mentally tough you become and being able to handle food and having the knowledge to know what to do when different things happen. And to have a group like this where you get all these additional uh, tidbits of information is just phenomenal. Thank you. David, gosh darn it, you did it again. The quotable quotes of, of, of David. Okay, so I don't know what you guys picked up on, but for me it was, um, you don't get rattled. I couldn't think of a better term when he was saying that, I was saying, yes, that is exactly how those of us that are you know in lifetime maintenance particularly, um, that's the feeling. It's, you, you don't get rattled. I love that terminology. Um, and also, I'll say it plays in uh, uh, to a segment I'm going to cover about folks that are on a GLP-1 um, uh, compound, you know, class of compounds uh, for, for weight loss. 
And like you're referring to David with Weight Watchers or maybe any program where you kind of like finish a program and then many times kind of fall off a cliff. There's no really off ramp onto what do you do, you know, moving on through the rest of your life. I want to address some really interesting conversation that I had earlier this week with somebody that is on a GLP-1 drug, currently taking injections once a week, and the, some of the highlights of that conversation and where I think we can really come in um, uh, on supporting these folks. But I'll save that for a, a moment. But I just, I think what David's talking about is so incredibly clear. So Chris is, has lost over a hundred pounds and I believe it's been uh, roughly a decade or so. And here she can go, you know, we say, you know, just try to keep it between the rails of a four lane highway, you know, but occasionally, hey, like life, we go to those, you know, back-to-back -back pizza parties or whatever. And you know what? We kind of went over the rail for that day. And, um, <laughs> So, or Brazilian you know, restaurants. That's my Brazilian favorite. Restaurant. <laughs> oh man, I'll tell you, I'm off. I'm 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 not only over the rail, I'm through the ditch into the next <laughs> county when I hit a Brazilian restaurant. I'm telling you, uh, as Emily, some of Emily's family is just north of Dallas. I don't know how those people operate. I stopped into that Brazilian restaurant. Wheel me out of there. I you know. Somebody grab my little card that says red or green, flip that thing over and put it on a red and tie my hands behind my back because I'm, I'm a crazy town when it comes to those Brazilian restaurants. So, but I digress, whether it's pizza parties or Brazilian restaurants, we pop back over the rail, get in between the four lanes of the, of the highway, go into our, our bit of a corrective course no anxiety, not rattled. We know we got this and boom, we're right back. And I love that uh, portion of uh, that skill set, that life skill that we develop in this uh, health point program. So thank you for that so much, David. And we are going to go, if he's interested to uh, Hank, if Hank is interested, uh, look for a mute, unmute, and looks like we've got an unmute. So good. We don't have a camera, but now we see we got a camera. Good morning, Hank. How are you? Good morning, guys. Great. Good to all. It's great to hear from all of you. And I'm going to keep this very short because I want to hear from you what you've got to share with us today. And quite sure it's going to be great, Eric. Um, we are going through those tempting times, you know, food-wise, holidays and all that. We just got to keep one thing in mind. Food, some people look at food for pleasure, but you got to remember food is fuel for the body. If we look, keep looking at food as for pleasure, yes, you got to start putting on those pounds, okay? In fact, I want to show you this quick picture. Uh, hopefully I can show it up to you. Can you see it? It's a little blurry, but I see a red and a... And a oh, yes. I, I know. What it simply says, it shows that two different people, uh, one eating for pleasure and the other one eating for fuel, and the, the, uh, either being trim or being obese, all right? And the bottom line was, you literally become what you eat. You literally become what you eat. So remember that. Uh, I'm not saying don't enjoy yourself for the holiday, but just keep an eye on what you're doing for how long. Because I want to leave you with this last thought from Steve Jobs. You all know who he is, right? He, he was. Uh, right. He's the founder of Apple. And uh, here's what is one of his last statements on the search. He said, the most expensive bed he ever owned was a hospital bed. And you surely don't want to end up there. So, you know, enjoy life. You could have a good, fruitful life, but you know, remember, food is fuel for the body. Keep that in mind, and that's what help point helps you accomplish. So, with that, I'm gonna sign off. I want to hear what Eric has to say. So, have a great time, guys. Enjoy the holidays, but keep your health in front of you. Okay. Talk to you all soon. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Hank. And I, I can thank you over and over for that quote because I've used that routinely uh, with people and 
the the statement that the the most expensive bed has ever slept in is a hospital bed. I mean, it's just a, a very clear word picture that you know, particularly if somebody's looking at the expense of the Health Point program, right? You know, what is what is more expensive? Um, you know, uh, Health Point uh, or poor health? You know, not just in monetary standpoint, but um, all the other factors for sure. So super, super great stuff. Okay, guys, um, I'll close this out here with a uh, couple of things. One, just real quickly on myself, some of you uh, know this, I routinely do a six week cycle myself once a year. Okay. And that's typically in January. I've decided to do it here in December. I'm in, in a six week cycle right now. Real quickly, why do I do that? Uh, I do it because I, I never want to allow myself to digress into being someone that, that, you know, where I'm just kind of like an ivory tower type of unrelatable uh, facilitator or a coach in this program. And historically, if I do a six week cycle, it's not always to do a tremendous amount of weight loss or anything else like that. It's just to, just to, camp out in that six week cycle and experience it firsthand myself. So uh, the point that I'm doing here is I thought, hey, maybe I should chronicle this a little bit and put it up on the YouTube channel. So I did create a separate playlist. You can go there and I can't remember what it's titled, but it'll be obvious. There's just uh, two episodes on there and each one is only like a couple of minutes long. But it's basically just going through, you know, first of all, my numbers, you know, so it shows my own dashboard and I measure three numbers. I measure my weight, I measure my blood sugar, and I measure my ketones. And guys, it'll be really interesting when you take a look at that because, you know, I started this coming off. If you remember uh, last week, uh, my dad was coming into town. And so we were, you know, eating healthy, but, you know, as, as out, a little bit outside the rails and so forth. So if you take a look at my blood sugar and ketones, and then look at when I dropped into uh, the start of the first week, it's, it's, uh, it's really fun to, to look at. So um, just hit that, you can review that, and I'll continue to chronicle it. It's not going to be an everyday type of a thing, but I'm going to sporadically over the six week cycle, just chronicle little two minute segments and, and give an update and, and put that up there. So I wanted to share that. Uh, secondly, I wanted to comment and tell you a way that I'm thinking about this topic of uh, the GLP-1 class of drugs. I think we first did an episode on this sometime this summer, because I can vividly remember where I was at up near our cottage. And I remember a number of us were talking about Ozempic and so forth and, and so forth. So this is obviously a big, big, big thing going on right now. Carol, I think you guys talked about how you get uh, emails from, you know, brokerages and investment uh, platforms that were talking about, you know, geez, you know, you can get a, you know, 8x return on your investment because of how many of these drugs are being uh, sold in the, in the marketplace in America right now. So this is a big thing. And I, here's what I wanna say. My perspective on the GLP-1 class of drugs, Ozempic, et cetera, was kind of like us against them. And to a certain extent, I wanna be clear, that is kind of my positioning that if you're not addressing the root cause of things, then hold on a second, you know, maybe, maybe people need to be thoughtful about this. We've also talked about how it's been uh, shown that just because you lose, you know, 50 pounds, does it mean 50 pounds of fat? Or does it mean 30 pounds of fat and 20 pounds of muscle? Okay, so there's a whole imbalance that goes on with muscle loss on these types of drugs as opposed to just the fat loss. People don't wanna lose muscle. A lot of people don't realize they're losing muscle uh, perhaps by using that. But uh, my point is, is that my mindset has been a little bit adversarial towards this. And I wanna kind of recap a, uh, brief points of a conversation that I had with someone this week and share with you where I think we can come alongside 
with our health point program and be in position ourselves to advocate for these folks, particularly as an off ramp for their protocol. Okay, so to having a conversation, actually as somebody that does some bookkeeping for me, don't talk with her uh, too, too often, but I had some questions. So we're doing a rare phone call. She's actually in another state and just dialoguing about this and that and other random topics, just kind of catching up. She's kind of a friend. Uh, again, her and her husband are out in Idaho, but it, it came up randomly that, that seemed to me randomly that she said something about not drinking alcohol anymore. Um, and I thought, well, I don't know her that well. Maybe it's something with, you know, maybe she had an alcohol issue or something. And fortunately, I asked, you know, again, it's kind of a little bit of a sensitive topic, but I felt comfortable enough. I asked her kind of a following question. Well, well, well why is that? You know, to, was it, I think I asked, you know, is it a, do you have an alcohol issue or something? And she said, oh no. She said, because I'm taking a compound that is, um, you know, makes me, you know, nauseous if I drink alcohol now. And she said, you know, my, my husband and I would go out to a restaurant I'd usually have like a glass of wine and now I can't even do that. I said, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> okay, this is going in a different direction than I thought. I said, by chance, is that like a GLP-1 class of drugs, like an Ozempic? She said, yes. She says it's a specific compound that, you know, a local doctor here in Idaho puts together and it's got that element. And then it also has a you know, bunch of vitamin B and stuff like that. And she went on, you know, on this. And one thing I'll tell you is that it was from a price point, because later I asked her about that, because I've heard uh, people, depending upon the drug that they take, you know, some people are upwards of a thousand dollars a month for those, those products. And hers was much less. So it was a, a little bit of different formulation, different compound. And actually the cost of hers is right in line with what our health point program is, or at least what I do as a health point program, if you were to break it down on a monthly basis. I, I just, so, so there's that factor. So I was asking a lot of questions about this. And then I got into asking about her experience with it. And, uh, and again, guys, you know, we can't, we can't um, uh, discount the fact that if somebody is struggling with weight, if they are, if their BMI puts them in an overweight category, if their BMI, if you're, if you're familiar with that body mass index, just a quick calculation uh, to, to determine whether somebody is in the obese category or overweight category or so forth. If somebody is obese and they're able to take one of these drugs, the, it's an injectable drug. In her case, it's once a week. Um, they will lose weight pretty much. Certainly. And in her case, she started in, in September and she's down about 18 pounds right now. Okay. So I started asking some other questions, you know, just not in a judgmental standpoint, because I was truly curious because this was the first time I've been able to speak with somebody on the front lines of taking this type of product. It wasn't, you know, I've read a lot of articles. I've read a lot of peer reviewed papers on it. I've done a lot of, you know, the scientific journals on it. This is my first time talking with somebody that I know and I've known for years and what is her experience. Okay, here's what I can tell you. In her case, and I think this is pretty much standard protocol, there's a fixed duration of being able to take that uh, drug. I, uh, I don't have the notes in front of me, but I'm pretty certain that in her case, it's 12 weeks. And the way it works is that she increases a dosage um, five units every week, okay? So when she did the math, uh, basically it caps out, let's say that you're taking five units and then 10 units and then 15, it caps out at, I believe she said 45 units, okay? And I said, well, well, why is that? Uh, is it because at certain point there's a maximum tolerance of, you know, what is clinically safe, you know, that if you go beyond that, you could be experiencing some sort of a medical issue. Um, and she, she talked about that. 
And then, so we looked at when she was going to be finishing up. I think um, it's going to be, you know, after the new year, she's going to be finishing up with this protocol. And I don't know, you know, for you guys that are in the coaching, the facilitating realm, if your mind is going where I'm going um, with when I'm having this conversation and she's talking about increasing this dosage, it's a course of 12 weeks. The natural question is, what do you do? What would be my question? What do you do after? After the 12 weeks. <laughs> yes. What do you do after the 12 weeks? Okay. That was interesting. Interesting conversation from that point. Because up until this point, it was, she talked about the side effects, you know, the nausea. Um, about sometimes having to up or, or not never up sometimes to reduce her dosage because she said it was never a nausea that just had her laying out on the couch, you know, not being able to function, but it was just kind of this ugh feeling, but you know, she's a high performing, she, her, her career is in accounting and bookkeeping and so forth. Um, and so she has to be high functioning and she is, she said she can function even with that nausea. So, but it was, it was largely optimistic and positive. And, and again, I'm like, hey, good on you. You know, obviously I talked, you know, a little bit more about our health point program along with this, but basically I was just like, good on you. Then we got to this topic of this understanding how it increases these, you know, five units a week, every week, and then it gets caps out at 45 units and then you have to stop. And I asked the question, well, what do you do after that? that the conversation took a totally different tilt because she knows this. She does not know what she's going to do. That's the bottom line. Okay, so just like, you know, David was referring earlier to maybe some other programs out there that maybe Chris did where there wasn't this off-ramp like we have in health point, right? We go six week cycle, six week cycle, six week cycle, six week cycle, whatever you meet your ultimate goal. Then we go into a three to nine month lifetime maintenance. And here we are, Chris, 10 years later, here, Emily and I are, you know, uh, since 2017, we've got this off ramp. We built the foundation. We've done it in a sustainable way. We're doing it with real food, real supplementation, all these types of things. We've got literally millions of people in America that are like this gal that I was speaking with, I asked her this. I said, holy cow. I said, I'm getting the sense that there could almost be a terminology, a phraseology out there in the marketplace right now called post GLP-1 anxiety. And she said, that nails it. She says, that's, ex that's basically how I feel. I don't know what I'm going to do when I come off of this. And we talked about that a little bit. Because what, what we do know, if you just read the, you know, the peer review papers, that a lot of people, they bounce back, right? When they don't have this drug that basically slows down their you know, basic digestive systems and makes them feel full. That's basically how it's, how it's working um, in, a, in a brief nutshell. When that's no longer the case, they haven't built any healthy habits. They're back to their old ways. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think that there is this category Big, big, big category in the marketplace. We'll call it GL, we'll call it, if you want to use a name brand product, call it Ozempic anxiety. Mm -hmm. Ozempic and anxiety, GLP-1 anxiety. And, you know, I don't want to go any, you know, further just for, from a standpoint of time on this. I could easily talk more nuances of our conversation and talk for a half an hour on this, but let me just kind of wrap it up because at the end of the day, it's, what what can I do? 
and what can I do for, for people like her? And what can I do in terms of positioning myself in the marketplace? And I can tell you this right now is that, you know, part of my conversations are going to be about um, making it known that I help people that are currently on Ozempic, or I help people that are currently, you know, on a GLP-1 uh, injection. Okay. Because, it, and I even believe that there could be, you know, strong possibilities, depending upon the doctor, you know, are they an integrative medicine doctor? Are they a functional health? Are they an MD? But guys, make no mistake, there is big money being made in the medical system through this prescription of this drug. And hey, doctors are profit motivated. They're hopefully motivated by helping their patients. And I think they are. But if I can come alongside key people in the medical community, maybe they've got dozens or hundreds of patients that are taking Ozempic or GLP-1, other GLP-1 class of drugs and say, let's, let's chat, okay? Because what are, you, what, are you, what are these folks doing during and certainly after their, their injections are over, okay? And perhaps we can come alongside and start integrating in parallel, not in resisting to it, but in parallel, particularly while, while their appetite is suppressed due to this drug and start saying, here's your meal system, here's healthy macronutrients, here's your healthy micronutrients, here's your healthy community, here's you know, your water consumption. Let's start building in these habits now because you're coming to a cliff. You're coming to the edge of Niagara Falls if we don't if we don't get a handle on this and kind of build this in. And you know, absent of this, you're very likely going over Niagara Falls and are going to be bouncing back. Or maybe if we've built this, or if you've already gone over Niagara Falls, hey, I can come in and help you there as well. But let's just start, you know, having this conversation to deal with this Ozempic anxiety. Because I tell you, talking with this gal, this was just two, three nights ago, she's got it. And it's months away. And she's already got the anxiety about what's going to happen when she comes off of these injections. So guys, we've got a plan. Any, any thoughts, comments uh, on, on that? Uh, I've gone over my time here, but if anybody has any thoughts or questions, uh, we could hang out for a bit here before we wrap. Eric, I just want to say I love the Ozempic or the uh, yeah, the Ozempic anxiety, because everybody knows the term Ozempic. And uh, I, was, I was listening to you. Uh, what rings true is everybody knows who Paul Harvey is and his story, uh, his program, the rest of the story. Uh, and this is we've got the rest of the story. So if we build on that, um, pull the person with the anxiety or knowing even if they don't have the anxiety, they're moving into this program. Uh, story for you so that you never have to do that again so um but i love that ozempic anxiety that's a that's a great term yeah i i like that i love paul harvey too boy i love paul <laughs> harvey he's good the rest of the story so guys we've got the rest of the story we've got a story that people can do for the rest of their life you know you can't be you know taking these weekly injections for the rest of your life but you can do health one <laughs> for the rest of your life uh, Hank and Carol are, you know, proof positive of that, um, shining examples and, and, and leadership uh, to all of us. But guys, uh, we've done it again. Uh, we've we've uh, ratcheted through a, a power hour of, uh, of uh, Saturday morning walk and talks. We'll wrap it on that. I'll get this up onto YouTube ASAP. And uh, till next time, uh, uh, next Saturday, same time. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. Thanks, Eric. Thanks. It. You bet.